We arrived at our field camp on Canada's Southampton Island at the entrance of Hudson Bay to study the nesting sites of Atlantic Brant. The population of this goose has been on the decline and we've been working to see if limitations during the summer breeding season are accelerating this trend. The brand has a number of factors working against it, beginning with its size. Because the brand is smaller than the other two birds that nest in the area, the snow goose and the cackling goose, it's at a disadvantage when competing for food and habitat. Migratory geese are most driven by light cycles. Their internal clock is saying, it's time to leave and get up to the Arctic. I think Brandt take the exact opposite evolutionary strategy and say, well, we're smaller and it takes us a while to get up there. We have to stop and eat along the way to rebuild our fat reserves. But we can guarantee that when we do get up there, everything will have melted and there'll be plants growing, so we'll have things to eat when we land. But earlier arriving geese also have access to the best nesting sites, islands with deep water around them that arctic foxes can't reach. Arctic foxes are the biggest predator of goose eggs, although other animals, from herring galls to polar bears, also eat the eggs. Then there are other factors in the food chain to consider. We thought last summer might mark a growth year for Brant because there was almost no competition for nest sites and food. However, there were almost no lemmings for foxes to eat, so they had to rely primarily on bird eggs. Geese and shorebird nests were hit hard across the study area. What we think is happening is that there are good years and there are bad years for the Atlantic brand based on weather and predators, but competition with other geese is becoming an increasing factor. The cackling goose population has exponentially increased and has inserted itself into the equation, something that was not there 30 years ago when brant populations were much more robust.